Hello everyone, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, and today we are saluting the work of Dokomomo. What is Dokomomo? It is essentially kind of the fan club of mid-century architecture, meaning from about 1930 to about 1980. And today, on this Dokomomo-themed program, we have a guest, William Bill Chapman, <laughs> as he is called. He is the Dean of Architecture at uh, UH Manoa. Thank you for the wild nickname. The wild nickname, Bill Chapman, <laughs> we call him. And what we're going to talk about today specifically is buildings that we've lost. So these are Honolulu buildings that have been demolished from the, the modernist time period. Things that we uh, want to, and we want to emphasize to people too that they're, while we cannot stop change, we also want to be aware of conserving things and preserving things and being aware that buildings of this time period are worth preserving. And conserving. Well, Hawaii was really blessed with a lot of yeah. modernist architecture Absolutely. because it coincided with the boom period it's in exactly development right. just around right. the time of statehood and afterward. And so we had a lot, and a lot has been lost, too, like That's you true. say. Yeah. Well, so Coco's <clears throat> is behind us, but we're not going to deal with Coco's right yet. Let's go to our first slide. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about demolition. And before the show started, you and I were discussing the wholesale destruction of a lot of downtown Honolulu for urban renewal, right. as well as the construction of the H1 freeway, as well as the widening of Vineyard Boulevard. So it's the loss of, of these the, things is yeah, what we're... It's a kind of paradox in a way because what was getting lost during urban renewal was really the 19th and really yes. early 20th yes, century. Yes, it was. That's what so it. we lost our downtown. We lost yes. Chinatown, really. We yeah. kept some of it, but very little. Yeah. <clears throat> and we lost other neighborhoods. And, and yet modernism ushered in vineyard exactly. and the highways and, exactly and in a way that's always been strange to me to now in my point in my career to preserve be yes trying to preserve the very buildings that lent themselves to the loss that's right of these really wonderful 19th century buildings. that's exactly right and this this is something <clears throat> things gain charm and interest as time passes that they did not initially seem to have right Okay, first, let's go to our slide. Let's go to our next slide. And we're going to talk about something, a development of the post-war period, and those are shopping centers. And there are a lot of extant shopping centers still with us from that time period. But here are two that are gone, completely gone. The Moana Lua Shopping Center that you see at the upper right, there still is a shopping center in that location. But this 50s one was completely demolished. And did you, uh, yeah. who, who designed this? Well, it was, an, it was a group of architects, but it included Alfred Price and Vladimir Osipov were both on the team that designed this shopping center. And a ve those Look are very, at that wonderful graphics. Yeah, that and that's of. something else too. We were just talking about <clears throat> signage, et cetera, which has all changed as well. Mm -hmm. And then in the lower corner, we've got the Kalihi Shopping Center. Now this is entirely gone except for a part of it, which is now a car dealership. And this opened up in the middle 1950s, and it was in an area, a, a small area of Kalihi that had a little boomlet of some 50s buildings, the First Hawaiian Bank across the street, across North King Street. There's also a church right nearby, so there was a 50s redevelopment mm. of this area, which had been uh, just pretty much residential. Um, this is one of the few shopping centers that didn't really just take off and stay in its position, and most of the other ones have. What an elegant entrance, don't you think? Oh, I know. Really and it's got this, it's got these very thin and metal <clears throat> poles, uh -huh. and it's got the, the kooky skylight hole mm -hmm. in the roof. Right, and then um, the kind of trees interpenetrating. It's just yes. a terrific, yes. terrific little center. And Reminds you some of some of the schools of the period. Well, I was just going to say, I went to Punahou and the Winnie units, right. and they looked very much like that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and my they're one of my daughters too. studied at Winnie units. I remember that, too. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> next picture. And a shopping center that is still very much with us is Ala Moana Shopping Center. I think a center. lot of people wouldn't even recognize it today. That's right. right. That's right. Well, and this is the way it looked in 1959 when it opened. Completely dominated by parking at the time, and yet there's hardly a parking structure. It was surface parking. That's right. Well, it was, <clears throat> but as we talked about, uh, when it was, it had been Bishop Estate Land. Walter Dillingham bought it. Right. Uh, he filled it via the Hawaiian Dredging Company, which he owned. And they started talking about building a shopping center here in the late 1940s, 1948. It was going to be a one-level one, 
But then when they actually started it in 1957, they kicked it up to be a right. two-level structure. Right. This is what's called phase one. Now, the basic structure is still there. Let's go to our next picture. Well, you and know, I'm William Murtaugh, who some people know, he was oh, yeah. a pioneering historic preservationist. He said he remembers being over at uh, La Pietra, mm -hmm. talking to Walter Dillingham. Yes. And Dillingham said he had this idea for this new shopping center. They conceived it in the late 40s. Yeah. And started really doing the prep work by the mid 50s. Correct. And as you said, 58, 59 is when the construction yeah. got done. Yeah. And then I guess it was Don Graham was a California yes. developer, was brought in to kind of conceptualize the whole right. place. So. Well, the thing that I wanted to say is that, that um, all I wanted, the basic structure is still with us. So in the lower picture, you can see the mall on the, on the opening day in 1959, in August of 1959. That basic structure is still there. But what we have lost at Alamoana are the other accoutrements or the uh, facades right. that were very much of the time. So the top picture shows you this fresco bas-relief modernist uh, abstract picture of, right. of Honolulu, yeah. which was God. on the Mauka wall of what was the McInerney store. Right. And as a little kid of five or six years old looking at that when it opened, I thought, wait, is that supposed to be Honolulu and which building is which? Because I was still very literally trying to figure out what that was. Well, all of that's been lost, as you said, because of these. Now, is this at the, this, see, I didn't live in Hawaii at that time, but is this at the Sears end then? Well, this is the phase one end. So this McInerney store was right where the center part is today, right. where the stage is. Right. That was just, so this was at the Diamond Head end of that, on the Mauka side. Okay. 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 Well, next picture... Uh, we see two other things that are right, gone. The, well, the, that, that, certainly that piece of art is gone in right. the pool. We, well, do the, see that we do see the Ala Moana building, and that's exactly. still there. And we still have the revolving restaurant that no longer that revolves. That doesn't revolve. <clears throat> well, this, the lower picture shows you a fountain that was located in the center part, which now, of course, is it's kind of where Neiman Marcus is now. Right. And uh, exterior fountain, the, the center portion of the mall was not covered at that time. And in the top picture, this was Long's, is the only store that's still there. This was the side of the Long's drugstore where there was a planter box that had this ceramic 50s abstract tile pattern mm. on it. And it also had the uh, open ceiling of the open roof with the, yeah. with the slats in it, too. You know, to my mind, what probably the only really distinctive piece of not first phase but early second phase is Liberty House itself. Which oh, yeah. That's really the only thing you see of the period That's today. right. Well, let's go to the next picture because here's phase two, and this is what you just were mentioning, the right. part that was opened in 1966. The mall, uh, the fountain in the center, of course, has been changed. The overhead part has been changed. It's been enlarged from two stories to three right. stories. And at the very end, this is the Liberty House right. end where Shirokia was and where the um, Conrad Jewelers was. There was this soaring structure with the, the circular holes in yeah, the ceiling. Yeah, wonderful again, isn't it? With it coming down to these tapered columns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> very, very typical of that time. It's, uh -huh. like, um, it's like the State Capitol building. It's like, uh, it's like other things, too. Um, and this is, again, all wiped out. The Travelator was a, an escalator that you can see that was flat. It right. didn't have steps. I always remember hearing the story about the earlier series, that the Sears building, which I think was on Baratania. Yes, it was. And that was the first escalator in town. And it actually oh. brought people out. Am no, I wrong? You're wrong. The first <clears throat> escalator was in the Mitsukoshi department store in right. 1941. Well, I understand but that the one at the Sears that was, a big, was deal. a big deal. Oh, it was. It was. <laughs> okay, well, next picture. Let's see what else we've got. Okay. Oh, man. Hawaiian Village Hotel. What a place, huh? What a place. The Hawaiian Village Hotel opened in 1955, and it was built by Henry J. Kaiser, who we were talking about earlier, just was a huge industrialist, very well-to-do, and he just said, build it. I want it built right now, build it. And people did. And from 1955 to 1960, the Hawaiian village changed dramatically. They constantly were building stuff. Very little of the original 50s Hawaiian village is still there. This is a picture of an amazing uh, thing which was there. It's a swimming pool, as you can see, but it had a retractable cover. 
So on the left-hand side, there are the people standing on the retractable cover. So during the day, it's a swimming pool. And next picture. Yeah, By night, it's a exactly. dance floor. Now, this is an interesting story because this was one of these old Hawaiian estates, right? Yes, it was right. The John Ina estate. Yes. It became a hotel, the Mana. What the, was the New Malu. New Malu in 1928. Yeah. Modest yeah. wooden buildings. Right, right. And then this would be replaced by Henry Kaiser's vision. Right. He had another California developer working on this one, Fritz Burns. Fritz Burns, that's correct. That's correct. <clears throat> and he had this idea of creating this little village. I think there were 70, not individual unit cabins, but 70 rooms. That's all. And but then, I think some of them may have shared the same. They did. They, were, they were the same. They were, they were <clears throat> like a duplex. They were like individual houses, right. essentially, is what they looked like. And it was right around the corner from... Uh, place that you and I both love, the Tahitian Lanai. Well, exactly. Which had a which lot of the door. same scale exactly. and style to it. It was a lovely place. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know how they got around the fire code and issues like that. They oh, that's, no, 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 it. that's a very good point. <laughs> well, something else that was at the Hawaiian Village Hotel, which was very notorious in our next picture, is the Kaiser yeah. Aluminum Dome. What a thing we had, right? I know. And this was used <clears throat> as an auditorium, and it was partly a publicity stunt for Kaiser brand aluminum, Absolutely, which Henry J. Kaiser owned, but it was also <clears throat> this Buckminster Fuller design was what we all thought we were going to be living in in the distant future in the year 2000. He had been an artist and resident at Black Mountain College in North Carolina back in the 40s, right after the war. Mm -hmm. He'd had some experience in the military during the war with building temporary buildings and things. Correct. And he came up with this geodesic dome idea. And right. he thought he could put these pieces together and they had tremendous strength because as anyone in the building trade knows a triangle is your really most rigid stable. form and stable this went up in two days two 11 hour shifts yeah they actually did put a column in the middle yes and then they built around that column mm -hmm. and then they could magically remove the column and it went up right. almost 50 feet 548 so it's five yeah. stories high yeah Got finished in 57. Yep. His first big dome. Yeah. It would later become a kind of, like you say, a hallmark for the counterculture during the 60s. Absolutely. Build your own Joe exactly. Dome. Exactly. But it got very the, few in Hawaii because of permitting, I think. But, but. but at the time, <clears throat> this was the space age. This was modern. And ironically, then in the hippie area, era, it became kind of like a do it yourself. Yeah, the down alternative. Home thing. They made them out of plywood and then right. they rotted. They didn't work so yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. But well, this lasted until 99, is that yeah. what we thought? Yeah. Well, see, if we go to the next picture, you'll see that the dome was a prominent landmark of Absolutely. the Hawaiian Village property. And I still remember as a kid, I didn't see it here, but I remember when. Around the world in 80 days, yes. the David Niven came out. Right. Uh, Mike Todd's big extravagant right. thing, where he actually took the camera to other locales. Exactly. That and Gigi came out the same year, where they actually filmed in Paris. Exactly. This is, this is a big innovation. This is a big deal. Well, the, 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 stuff, this right? famous <laughs> movie, Around the World in 80 Days, and and again, this this Henry Kaiser loved publicity and free PR. So, Around the World in 80 Days showed at the Aluminum Dome for like six months or a year or something And I like think that. they had a, a big wide screen, right? Oh, they did. Because it was they shot did. in Cinemascope, right? And they put it, no, it was in Tadeo, which oh, was Mike right. Todd's. that's right, his own version. Yes, his yeah. own version. Well, that's <coughs> gone too. Unfortunately, that and is And then Don Ho, us. you'd use it as a venue for yes, many years. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <clears throat> and I think in 64, you had Elvis at both at generally at the village, right? And he yeah, was he, there. When, his first, when he first came <clears throat> in 1957, he stayed at the Hawaiian Village. Right, yeah. but I think some of Blue Hawaii was filmed. Yeah, 1961, the uh -huh. film Blue Hawaii is shot uh -huh. there. Dennis yeah. the Menace comic book was you there. You and I talked about it. I Hawaii and I, it and I don't know what happened to mine. I've got mine. Hawaii and I <laughs> television show took place there. It got a lot of <clears throat> PR. Okay, next picture. We are going to go to something that modestly called itself the world's most beautiful restaurant, and that was Canless Charcoal Broiler, which is at uh, Kalakaua and Kalaimoku Street. 
uh, designed by Wimberley, Pete Wimberley. And Pete I think Wimberley I'm, and Cook at the time. They were yeah. a small group. And, right. And I want and, to, I think I'm going to do a Wimberley show because he did so many amazing buildings. Yeah, really lovely, huh? And this it, was... It's, it's like, you want to say it's tiki, but it's really a step above tiki. It is. Absolutely. No, you're uh -huh. exactly, that's right. Go to the next picture and we'll see the interior of it. And it's got this big soaring A-frame. Uh, it's got the usual... A rough lava rock, basalt rock, right. contrasted with the other yeah, smoother surfaces. Exactly. You wonder how the you know the park naturalism you know seemed to have had a big influence yeah. on this as well. So yeah. the total inspiration isn't Polynesia. No, it's a no. little bit of a little bit of the Mission sixty six kind of yes. stuff that was going yes. on with the Park Service, where they absolutely to bring they modernism were, into the park. Correct, and there was a lot <clears> of very <throat> soaring. Uh, pointy big right big open structures. spaces like this Correct. yeah right well from this particular restaurant we will go to another one in our next picture and this modestly built itself as the world's most beautiful chinese restaurant no, i like this one very much and i was just checking something this is this is P. Y. Chai. yeah and py chong's owned and built by a man named py chong who uh -huh. uncharacteristically for a chinese businessman spent way too much money and went bankrupt and it had to get taken from him. Well, you and I were just talking before the show about I'd been recently in Los Angeles and these kind of thematic yeah. shopping center, restaurant yes. combinations were really the development of the time. And we tend to, you know, you kind of look at this and you see the obvious Chinese influences, including the pagoda tower yes. and the gate and things like that. But it could have been, you know, done in the Spanish colonial style exactly. just as easily. So they been Los Angeles has a lot of these sort oh, of very remnant much. developments and we, around. Los Angeles architecture <clears throat> had a big influence on us, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Uh, this was demolished in 1965 for a high-rise, surprisingly mm -hmm. enough. This was in Waikiki. And in the next picture, we can see that not only was this, in, there was an interior, obviously, of the restaurant, but it was a nightclub as well. Right. And had that's an outdoor what I mean stage. about having these kind of complex. Oh, absolutely. It was. It was like a yeah. complex. So it, you know, isn't it interesting to think, you know, Mrs. Cook rejected the tower by Bertram Goodhue oh, yeah, for, the for the Art Academy. Museum. It's almost like it ended up yeah. floating over here. Right, it did. Hers is a square plan Correct. version, and this one's round. But, but that's an eye-catching, you know, and in, a, in what he <clears throat> at that time uh, was all low-rise. It, right, was, it right. was an eye-catching building. Right. Okay, next picture. We go to another restaurant, and this is remarkable because uh, this was on Kalakaua Avenue. It was demolished. Uh, it was built about 1960, 61. Yeah, it was on the Mackay side. And right, it yeah. was where the um, Cheesecake Factory restaurant is today in the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. But it looks like a home. It's amazing. It looks like a huh? private home. Vladimir Osipov. And it looks like one of Vladimir right. Osipov's and, homes. And it is as if you've transported it. And the, that right. kind of copper coloring and yeah. everything. The whole thing has a really strong kind of Rydian feel. Very, very think. horizontal. Yeah, yes. very much in the spirit of that. And this yes. wonderful sort of screen wall on the left yep. of, 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 uh, of what we always call moss rock here. Yeah, but, but it's lava, basaltic lava and so on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a terrific place, huh? And again, look at the writing. The exactly. script is so yes. snappy, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, speaking of snappy <clears throat> script writing, let's go to the next picture because this was one of my favorites. And if you look in the upper picture, up in the top, the littlest kid in that picture is me. Oh, that is so and cool. And that's me at the age of five yeah, at I Tops missed, restaurant. I missed Tops. I missed Tops. I didn't see it ever. So. Well, this was, this was opened in 1956 at Kalakaua, I mean at uh, Ala Moana and Ina Road. And across, it was diagonally across from the dome. So we had two really 50s structures yeah. right next to each other. And this was designed by a famous uh, architectural group in Los Angeles called Arme and Davis. And they specialized in what is called Googie architecture yeah, for this type of coffee shop. And, and there's um, a lot of differentiation now, you know, what is Googie, what is programmatic. Programmatic, I guess, is when it actually literally imitates the product. Oh, correct. So you yeah, actually but, had hot dogs. Yeah, but this giant is... Giant hot dogs. This is not a giant... Hot dogs. Right, so this, this isn't is a giant hot dog. This is, this is more space This is very spacey. Uh -huh, yeah. And um, <clears throat> very modern. It had this, this... You can see this diamond-shaped structure that was composed of smaller diamond shapes, which, again, as a little kid, I thought, what is it there for? Well, it was just there to catch your attention. Exactly. But look at, the, look at those... Uh, the kind of uh, diagonal braces oh, very, there. Yes. 
It's yeah. like Taliesin West. Yes, it is. It's so That's much also, like that, right? It's a, it's a, a pop culture version of it. Yeah. It's a pop culture version <clears throat> of, of Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah. Um, this was demolished to build a high rise in 19. This, uh, this building only lasted 20 years from 56 to 76. Next picture. Another restaurant, and this is very much like what you were just mentioning about Los Angeles influence. This right. is the Cow Cow Corner Drive. This Drive-in. is the old '30s version, right? Before right. they built the built the 1960 version. Right. Well, this one. Yeah. So this is this was uh, this actually was built in 1941, mm. and it again the rounded uh, facade and the rounded um, so base this must of the have been building. Built just before the war. Just though, before right? the war. And it this was, was a major hangout for GIs oh, yeah. during the oh, it war. Was. And in fact, it Cow Cow Corner had that very famous, famous sign, sign. Where exactly. on directions of how well, far away Tokyo let's was and how go far. to the next picture because <clears throat> there's oh, there the is. famous yeah. sign. Oh, terrific! Yeah. And this neon sign was located on busy at the busy intersection of Kalakaua Avenue and uh, Kapilani what Boulevard. A, what a shame now. There's nothing really to mark no, that. You no. have nothing left anymore. No. That area. And this was, everybody <clears throat> had their picture taken there. And there I can't are believe, scores of pictures. I can't believe with the convention center being right next door that yeah. somehow we haven't managed to create some urban Something space iconic. that brings this back, I, that it nods I, to this. I think it should come back. I agree with you. This is where basically for our viewing audience who don't necessarily quite know where this is, mm-hmm. this is Hard Rock Cafe. Well, it's area. actually now uh, Honolulu Coffee Company. The Hard Rock Cafe moved out I of... I knew well, that. They moved over yeah. to Calicao yeah, exactly. as well. But that's well, where Hard Rock's building was. was. We go yeah. to the next <clears throat> picture. So in the 1950s... Yeah, this is great. Cowco Corner looked like this, and it's uh-huh. the typical archetypal... You know, and sock had, hop, malt shop. And they actually did thing. have serving and young ladies. Is, yes, yes. <laughs> and I got the taken there. <clears throat> on, I only remember <clears throat> going once in 1960 before it closed and seeing how the tray got put on the car window was astonishing to me. And I didn't have that experience. Yet. I, I, I only had it once. <clears throat> um, but so, but you got to remember that just up the street near where uh, McKinley is, it was an outdoor... Theater, right? Oh, the, yeah. No, no. That, yeah, d- down the street, down Kapiwani, this is absolutely. I mean, this, there was, was a drive-in theater. So this was oh, yeah. all oh, yeah. linear, oh, yeah. strip Flat. development. Exactly. Flat. There was not a lot of high rises <clears throat> yet. Uh-huh. So in 1960, Cow Cow Corner closed, and if we go to the next picture, this building that you just saw was 1960. just remodeled with a facade over it, right? To right. make it really quick. And once again, we get the Taliesin kind of yes. ribbing on the outside. Yes. Side. Yes, exactly. Uh-huh. And this is we've we've gone from a drive-in, which was one archetypal American restaurant, to the twenty-four hour coffee shop, the other one. And then when this got demolished in nineteen eighty six, what was built? The theme, the chain theme restaurant, the Hard Rock Cafe. Right, right. All at that same location. Yeah. Okay, next picture. Now we're gonna have to go through some theaters very quickly. Yeah, we're dipping back into the Deco period, really, right? right? This but is this is the time even. period when there were uh, neighborhood theaters in abundance. This is before television, and this was when, in the, particularly in the 30s, there was a big explosion in uh, local theaters. And so this is small thir- towns. This is 31, I know. This that is 1931. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the Hall Eva Theater was demolished in the late 70s, early 80s. 80s, I think. And it was a big. Um, Over the weekend. Community. There's People a lot of were protests. really upset about it because there's um, a lot of stuff going at that time. And it was uh, really a, a local <coughs> point of the community. Yeah. Uh, next picture is a really forgotten theater in Kahului. I know, and, and it has that kind of, like the style of Punahou Chapel. That yes, kind it does. Of, uh, yes, Dillingham. Um, it yeah. looks like the Dillingham. Yes, and it's got this this uh, roof over the front. I didn't the mean front. the chapel, but the yeah. performance center. Correct. But, uh-huh. And um, this was and demolished. That was Bertram Goodhue, and this is just probably a Goodhue knockoff. But I think you're right. Something of the feel of the Southwest, I think you're right. right? Yeah. I think you're right. Uh-huh. Yeah, this was demolished for a shopping center in the 1950s. Uh, next picture, we've got a, a theater that's still standing, although not as a theater anymore. It's part of a uh, retirement community. What a f- funny schizophrenic building. You've got a little bit of yep. what we were talking about, about yep. the 
California yes. Yes. Exposition in 1915. Yes. The Panama was the California Panama Exposition in San yeah. Diego, which Correct. Bertram Goodyear was the architectural right. coordinator for, and you got a perfect signature of that on the top. Right. And then all of a sudden it goes to this art modern look. Yes, it below. does. Yes, it does. <laughs> and if you look on the far left, it's just uh, a wooden structure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this facade is just there to make it look more grand. Well, it's still standing alone. It doesn't show, it's hasn't shown movies lobby. for a long it's time. It's a lobby of an old people's right, home, right? right? Is that appropriate to say about old people? I should say so housing. for the people who used to go to it. <laughs> Next picture, we've got another <clears throat> theater in the city of Hilo. This opened in uh, 1940. And it, unlike all the other ones, it wasn't demolished because of urban renewal or, or yeah. economic pressures. It, yeah, it was, was badly damaged right? by two tsunamis, yeah. one in 1946 and after the one in 1960, it closed for good and it was eventually demolished. But it was very much like the Varsity Theater in Honolulu, which we've also yeah, lost. This is great. Look at um, the hall from 1939. The way they use the horizontal banding and then the lights. And the lighting and is very important. Yeah, the exterior neon lighting. Do you lighting. know the architect for this? I don't know. It's a terrific building, isn't it? I know yeah. the Varsity in Honolulu, of course, was became a kind of rep house toward the end. And yeah. that was C.W. Dickey as he moved into yeah. more modern style yes, in the post right. in the and just pre-war period. Had uh, to, yeah. Yeah, it was very interesting. But the plan of it was similar to the Toyo or the Waikiki, yeah. also CW Dickey Theaters. Okay, well, we've got it. We've got to rush through the <laughs> okay. last few things. We've got our next picture is of another theater, and this yeah, is, the is the Toyo Theater. It is the Toyo. It's CW Dickey, Dickey, kind of mainly Chinese, a little Japanese. Yeah. Originally, okay. I think, showed Japanese films. It did. You go to the next picture and you'll see the very ornate interior Absolutely. of it. I think some of it resides in a mutual friend of ours house at I this hope point. so. I don't know. <laughs> uh, our next picture is of another major theater. Oh, this man, is the Kuhio. The Kuhio. Uh, Finished was just in time for the war. Right. Didn't open in time for the war because the Navy exactly. requisitioned it. And then... Opened in '45, and I remember when it went down for Nike yeah. Town. Yeah, it was a shame. That was a lovely place. It was a beautiful for those place. Circles, uh -huh. uh, we've got several <laughs> more pictures. Let's go quickly through our Waikiki Theater okay. yeah. and our next picture. Absolute tragic thing. It, um, they took it apart in bits and pieces, so you never really had time to protest the whole thing. No, that, no, that's true. No, that's true. Next really, picture. Yeah, Waikiki uh, Theater. Had a wonderful fountain, Absolutely. which had metal plates with movie star signatures on it from the 1930s in yeah, the courts. You had the, you had the usherettes. Usherettes. Little, oh, yes. Little and pillbox picture, hats that they ran around. And, they had, there were usherettes because this, it was a reserve theater. They had this wonderful scenographic interior, right, and as the right. lights would fade, you'd see the clouds, clouds and on the, the sky oh, yes. and the Yes. The stars would come out. And the out. stars, it was quite it wonderful. It was magical. And I remember Bob playing the world. Oh, playing the organ, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it was great. Okay, next picture. <clears throat> We've got uh, our last thing. All right, good. The this pineapple. Is, this is the pineapple. I think pineapple? a lot of people are fond of the pineapple. I was very fond of it. <laughs> it was a real icon of Honolulu. It was atop the Dole Cannery. It was the water, f it was the water supply for the emergency uh, fire sprinkler system. It did not contain pineapple juice, as I thought as a kid. <laughs> and it was, um, it was demolished in 1993 because it was falling apart. Well, apparently and the original idea from this came from C.W. Dickey, who was related to James Dole. Who and he was said this Dole would be, company. and you know, Dickey had designed other sorts of sign things, and he said this would be a good idea. And, and then was. eventually it got built, and there was a guy named Sims, what was it, Sims Hoyt? Um, what was his name? I wrote it down here. Sims Thurston Hoyt. Mm, was okay. the engineer who actually put it together. And then there was this Canadian guy named Co Coxcomb, I think his name <laughs> was. And he would periodically repaint it because it was in yeah. a very harsh and marine yes, it environment. Was. It, and was. So, it was. And there was hope when they finally took it down that they would put it back up. And no. they never did. No. Well, folks, thank you very much for joining us, and we are very happy that you were here uh, to join us for the Momo Show. That was super fun. Um, so we thank will, you. I will be seeing you again in our upcoming shows for Dokomomo as well as ThinkTech's uh, Human Humane Architecture. Till next time, everybody. Thanks and aloha. Thanks. That was great.